Did you know that Americans are 100% for gun rights? You see, we have here in America what's called the Bill of Rights. And the Bill of Rights is there to reaffirm God-given rights that we have. Um, rights that come from our Creator. And that is in the very structure of our nation. And so if you're an American, you have to be for what our rights are. You have to be for the laws of this land. And if you are not for those laws, then you are a subversive agent of a foreign country like communist China, a nation that is satanic and that hates God, hates the Bible, refuses to allow it into the hands of the people. Then that is subversive, a subversive agent coming here. Um, so if you're an American, you have to be for gun rights. The Second Amendment does not say you have to have a gun. All right. Um, it just simply is saying, we see that you have a God-given right to personal defense, and we support that. We will defend that God-given right to have firearms, to protect against tyranny, because that is uh, absolutely necessary. Uh, there is no such thing as... Um, a society where the people are disarmed and they have complete freedom and there's no crime. That doesn't exist anywhere on this earth. So when you have people coming out and saying, well, I live in America, but I'm against uh, private gun ownership. Well, then they're going against the very laws of this land. And those laws are not going to be, they're unalienable. You can't just take them away. You can't just say, okay, well, yeah, in the past, you know, America was this way, but now we're going to change it. Well, that only works if everybody's okay with it, you see? If everybody's okay with having America change, then okay, America can change. But as long as you have people in this nation that say, we have our rights here, this nation, this is the way it's supposed to be, this is how it's structured. When people try to come and take that away, they're no longer Americans. They're now working for a foreign government that's high treason. So, uh, you need to remember that. And as we go forward, there will be more attacks upon those liberties, upon that freedom. And uh, we just have to remember, it's not, well, they're, they're, they have their uh, rights and whatever else that they can express their opinions and things. Not when you are trying to subvert this nation. Not when you are trying to destroy this nation and destroy what this nation stands for. Um, that's wrong. Let me give you a little analogy, show you what I'm saying here. You have a bank and a bunch of customers walk into the bank and there's somebody that's in there to check their bank account balance. There's someone in there to open up a checking account. Somebody goes in to, to open up a savings account. Somebody wants to make a deposit. Somebody needs to make a withdrawal. They're all there to do business with the bank. They know that the bank's purpose is there to help them to pay bills and save money and whatever else. Okay, but in amongst that group of people that walked into the bank, there's somebody that wants to rob from that bank. They want to go in there and hold the people up and take the money out of that bank. Their mission, their desire is contrary to the purpose of the bank. Can they rightly be called a customer? No, they're not a customer. They're a bank robber. They're a thief, possibly even a murderer. You see what I'm saying? Somebody comes into America and they say, uh, yes, I know that you have a Bill of Rights here. I know that you have the Second Amendment. I know you have the First Amendment. Um, but we think we sh that the time has come to take that away from you. Uh, no, you're a, you're a subversive agent. You are someone that is coming along to try and take our God-given rights away. Uh, well, um, we're going to pass an assault weapons ban. Uh, you have no reason to do that. Right? Again, it, it's just a logical argument. Uh, well, there are, there's gun violence. Okay, why is there gun violence? It's not the gun. I mean, we have to go over this time and time again with these anti-gun communists. Um, guns don't cause violence. Duh. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I'm armed right now. Am I out killing people? No. I have no intention of ever killing anybody. Uh, so that argument is pointless to continue to bring up. Well, there are statistics that, sh that show that uh, guns cause violence. Yeah, statistics? Oh, like the statistics that say the vast majority of Americans or, you know, so many percent of America 
a bug go in my mouth. Um, <laughs> some whatever percentage of Americans are for gun control. That doesn't mean anything. Whenever you hear somebody come out with their statistics show and the studies show, ask yourself a simple question. Did they ask me? Oh, these, this congressman, this senator, whatever, they came out and they said, this such and such percentage of Americans are for gun control. They didn't ask me. Then it's a fake study. Um, now, it's okay to say of people polled in the specific area, we may have an estimated, you know, this much percent believes this way. That's one thing. But if they're coming out and they're saying, you know, the percent, this percentage of Americans are for whatever. That's nonsense. That is what the Bible calls an opposition of science, falsely so called. Uh, Paul writes to Timothy and he says, um, 1 Timothy chapter 6, he says about how that, uh, you know, avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20, I think it is. And uh, King James Bible, make sure to look it up in that. The same Bible that our founding fathers used. They didn't use NIVs or uh, the Dewey Reams. You say, well, the NIV wasn't there. Well, the Dewey Reams was, and it's basically the older version of what the NIV is and the ESV and the NASV and all these other ones. The Satanic Bible versions from the Vatican. So you don't use those. Use the King James Bible. One that comes from the Texas Receptus, not the Alexandrian uh, minority Greek text. That's a whole big issue that you can study on this channel. I have plenty of videos on that. But um, you have to watch out for this whole thing of this anti-gun stuff. Um, I realize I'm talking to people in other countries that you've already had gun control enacted. And um, so, sorry about that, but this video is more, mostly towards Americans. Uh, I think it is, I mean, you don't, you're not forced to have a gun. I get that. I can't force that doctrinally on you, but I think it's very important to have a firearm, um, you know, at least one, <laughs> probably a couple wouldn't, wouldn't hurt you. Uh, shotgun, rifle, pistol, whatever, uh, and train with them and everything else. Um, that's what keeps a country free. You see, there are certain spiritual things that are there, but there's also physical. Um, God, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Is that true? Yes. Well, bless God, then you don't need to pick or go and get food or whatever. You don't need to, you don't need to work for a living because my God shall supply all your need. So God can just make food appear on your table. No, you say, well, of course I have to have a job. I have to go out to the grocery store or go out into nature and pick things or have a garden or whatever yeah there's a spiritual aspect there where god can provide for you god can give you food but he also expects you to go out and look for that food and you thank him when you get it all right uh, you don't have a right uh, to grocery stores that is not some kind of a thing that that can never be taken from you or whatever else it can be taken from you very quickly all right so uh you know, a grocery store can shut down and they could be completely gone in the area, whatever. So what I'm saying is, when you go to the grocery store, learn to thank God for what you've been given. Thank you, Lord, for the money to be able to buy these groceries. That's why you pray and you ask for God's blessing. And nowadays, you should ask not only for his blessing, but His the cleansing and sanctification of that food because you don't know what the history of, of that food is. Even if you're buying, you know, organic food or whatever, um, you know, you still need to uh, pray and say, God, could you please cleanse and sanctify this food as well? Because I don't know where it came from. Um, so be thankful. Um, but you see, again, the practical thing there of, hey, I need to get to the office today. Lord, please transport me to the office. It's eight miles from here. And I need to be transported. No, I need to go and I need to get in a vehicle. And I have to check that vehicle and make sure that there's plenty of oil in it and that there's plenty of antifreeze and, and things in it. Check all the different fluids, make sure that the everything looks good, the tires have air and whatever. Um, I can't just expect God to do the work for me. You see what I'm saying? So why is it that a lot of people would say yes to understanding food? We have to do something to get our own food. We have to uh, do something to 
you know, have transportation, have to get dressed in the morning, have to, you know, uh, bathe and, and whatever else, but then you shouldn't protect yourself with firearms. It's kind of an odd situation. Uh, no, you need to protect yourself with firearms. Uh, if you can get them, if you're an American, then uh, that needs to be a big priority, especially as this nation is breaking down. Um, we have a lot of subversive agents here in America. A lot of communists, a lot of Satanists, and I mean open Satanists. I'm not just being sarcastic or exaggerating to prove a point. No, there are people that are openly Satanists in this nation, and they hate God, and they hate the Bible, and they hate you if you're saved. And um, a lot of people, you know, this uh, racism thing and whatever else, um, there's a lot of racist people out there that hate white people. And that want me to be ashamed of myself just because I'm white. Uh, I'm not ashamed of myself. You know, and um, a lot of these wicked people are trying to erase history. I saw there was a thing yesterday where there was a boy who's 12 years old. And he had the little Gadsden flag, you know, the little don't tread on me thing. The little snake that's broken into pieces, the different colonies and whatever. And, and they're saying don't tread on me. You know, don't take away our firearms. You, you can't just come and take away our, our freedom and our liberty. And that was considered a white racist flag, an extremist type of flag. No, it's part of our history. And it, you know, the school teachers, all white school teachers, you know, and they're, oh, we have to be ashamed of that. Oh, he has to remove that. And, and we don't want to take him out of class, but he had to be taken out of class because he has this racist flag on his backpack. You know, uh, no, no. Well, you know what, uh, Brother Brian, I think we just need to kind of, you know, let's just submit to it and, and we'll just kind of say, well, you know, we'll, I'll, I'll go along with it. No, no, time to take a stand. The time for talk and nice things and let's work this out and that's over. That's been over for a long time. If you don't realize that these communists and these wicked people are here actually waging war against us, uh, God help you, okay? It is a war. They want to fight they want to destroy what we believe in as Americans and uh, you know you can't just have this stand either as a Christian and say well here we have no continuing city we have nothing here and, and whatever um, we have to realize that yeah sure our home is in heaven absolutely but we have to maintain the thing of living peaceably uh, we want to be able to have a, a place where we can be and we can practice our faith as Christians, where we can spread the gospel without being put in prison. I'm not giving up, okay? I'm not going to give up and just say, well, okay, I don't want to say anything that will offend people. You know, uh, the cross is offensive. It isn't some kind of a thing where, hey, you know what? Um, the cross is just this thing, it's, it's just wonderful. And everybody should be able to be so happy with hearing the gospel and Whatever. No, it makes people mad if you haven't figured that out yet. So you can take it or leave it. You can do whatever you want with what I've said. Uh, get mad, post a nasty comment, whatever else. Um, but the fact of the matter is I will take a stand against these wicked people coming along and saying that I have no right to protect myself and my family. Um, out here, you can meet with uh, wild animals and things, big moose. Uh, or bear or whatever and if they have something going wrong in their brains they might try to attack I need to be able to defend myself they don't need an AR-15 to do that well no I wouldn't use an AR-15 to you know go after something like that the, the AR-15s are for two-legged um, brute beasts as the Bible calls them made to be taken and destroyed um, we can't be polite anymore it's there's no uh, middle ground that we can come to and, and sensible gun control. No, no. Um, America is being destroyed from within by subversive agents that have been brought in. And it's time for it to stop. It's time for Americans to just say, you know, real Americans, ones that stand for the Bill of Rights, um, ones that understand that the Bible is a, is a book, a foundational document upon which this nation was founded maybe not by the uh thomas jefferson benjamin franklin some of the other freemasons like that but america uh the real founding of america was the men 
uh, the men and the women that were in this nation and that prayed for this nation and wanted a nation where we could have freedom. Um, and they understood that guns are a very necessary part of freedom. Uh, the vast majority of people with guns never have to use them, but they're there if they ne are needed. And um, I mean, we can, you can see. Let's, I mean, let's just cut through all the propaganda and everything else. This isn't going to end peacefully. It isn't. Um, I'm going to give you a sure word of prophecy. Uh, I will now speak to you what's going to happen in the future, and I'm not joking. Um, there's going to be war in this nation. There's no peaceful way out of this. There will be a civil war, maybe not the same as what we had back in the 19th century with organized North versus South, you know, whatever. But there will be a war, and there will be a lot of bloodshed in this nation. I will give you that as a prophecy, and it will come to pass. Guaranteed. Um, so you better get on the right side. I know which side I'm going to be on, and I know which side that, uh, and I know which stands I will take, and nobody's going to take those stands from me. And uh, give me liberty or give me death. That's the stand of a Bible believer. So um, please do pray about it and uh, get very serious about this whole thing. Don't give in. No more compromising, brethren. No more compromising. It's time to take the gloves off and tell people that they're wrong, that they're wicked. And if there are stores that are forcing things that are against your beliefs as a Christian or against our rights here in America, then you don't patronize those stores. And uh, we have to start a civil war. Uh, it's just as simple as that. You say, did you just say that? I said, we have to start a civil war. Let's start out being civil. Telling people, no, I don't agree with you. I'm not going to take that stand. I refuse to do this. I refuse to do that. The most important word in the English language is the word no. That's very important. The most important name is Jesus, of course, but the most important word is no. The Bible says that we're not to be conformed to this world. Well, how do you not conform? You have to say no. All right, so that is going to be it. And we will see you in future videos. Thank you very much for watching.